Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the NFL draft and kind of gave you guys an idea of what it's going to look like possibly tomorrow. You know, there's still a ton of stuff to happen over the next 24 hours, but we wanted to break down kind of where everything sits right now and give you guys just an idea of what you could be seeing. But let's jump into Florida State and the ACC. There has been a huge thing that has happened over the last couple of days with Florida State and the ACC, and Florida State is on the wrong side of this one. In the uh, Tallahassee case where We've talked about a lot on this show. The battle in this um, case has been largely over where it's going to be tried. Uh, the ACC obviously wants it in North Carolina. Florida State obviously wants it in Tallahassee. So that's been a huge topic of conversation. But Florida State has not necessarily gotten the help from the Tallahassee judge that they were hoping they would get. Um, technically, the, uh, the judge, John C. Cooper, that is overseeing this case in Tallahassee, has uh, approved the ACC's motion to dismiss on Monday, but did give um, Florida State seven days to amend their kind of complaint against the ACC. So this is something that will be really interesting to watch over the next couple of days. Um, Florida State apparently in their um, in their argument, in their complaint uh, that they filed, the language wasn't spe uh, specific enough. It wasn't necessarily what the judge was looking for in terms of being able to bring a case that he said is worth up to half a billion dollars to trial. It's not necessarily, um, it's not the leg uh, to stand on necessarily as they go throughout this. So they're going to have to find a new pivot, um, not necessarily an entirely new way to attack this case, but will have to at least, you know, prove their point of why this is a big deal and why um, this should be tried in front of a court of law a little bit better over the next seven days. So they are working tirelessly on that, I'm sure. And then the ACC will have 20 days to respond to that afterwards. So um, the judge made this very clear that this is not over. The case will definitely continue throughout this time. And uh, it seems like it's probably going to find its way back into court now. He did say uh, they do have to start mediation in within 120 days. Uh, now, they wanted it to be 90 days. It got pushed back to 120, and I feel like that gives you kind of an idea of what is going to happen in those mediations. Now, he did say they do have to uh, mediate in good faith. They do have to uh, try to find a good uh, resolution to this, but the mediator cannot force them into an agreement. So... Definitely something that will be really interesting to watch. I think one of the really interesting things in all of this is Florida State and the ACC are obviously on wildly different sides of this issue. It feels like they are on two different sides of the Pacific Ocean when it comes to what they want, uh, what Florida State wants, and what the ACC wants uh, in terms of this case. And I think that's something that will definitely come into play when you get into mediation because it's all about finding the middle ground, right? But if you're the ACC, why would you try to find the middle ground with the school that is trying to leave? Why would you give up money that you kind of need going forward? We just talked about the crazy NIL case that is developing that could, you know, put a really big bill in front of your face. And uh, these schools are going to need that money as much as possible. So the way I see this, you know, good faith medi mediation, as it's put here, um, going is more the ACC sitting there with their arms crossed in Florida State uh, doing their darndest to make this uh, happen and make this, you know, as low of a number as possible because obviously that's the ultimate goal with Florida State here is they understand that they're going to have to foot some type of bill and they know that it's going to be a hefty chunk of change. Now, will it be the $700 million that is uh, currently being kicked around? Hopefully not if you're a Florida State fan. I think that's kind of the biggest thing here, but... I can't imagine that we will find this out during mediation. I have to imagine that both these people will get in this room that are just miles apart on this issue, and they'll just kind of look at each other for a couple of hours, and no one will budge, and we will find our way back to the courtroom. Now, hopefully, we can find some type of agreement, because I think there's so many things that are changing around college football, and so many things that are all over the place that... I think a lot of these teams, a lot of these entities, whether it's conference teams or even just players and coaches, I think they just want a resolution to a lot of these issues. So I think there is some type of push from particularly Florida State in this case to get some type of resolution um, to this issue as quickly as possible. But also the ACC, you know, you're about to be put in a situation where 
you could be fighting more than just two of your conference uh, teams. You could be fighting, you know, a ton of different battles around uh, your conference, and I think it could create a ton of problems. So while the ACC, you know, is in a position of power, I, I think they are definitely in the driver's seat when it comes to this conversation. I think they do need to be careful in the way that they go about it. I think there could be a world where, you drag your feet just a little bit too long and some more teams get involved and then the you know the court bills the all of the stuff that comes with uh these court proceedings continue to multiply and that's just something that literally cannot happen for the ACC if they want to stay afloat especially with the big bill that is coming around with the uh NIL um happening so Tons of stuff is going to be happening throughout this time, and I think one of the biggest questions I've had throughout, not necessarily throughout this entirety of this case, but at least in the last little bit as we've learned more about this NIL case and how big of an effect it is going to have on college football is, I guess, just how much does this case matter in terms of if the ACC wins out, fantastic, and they get all that money in the world, that's that's all well and good, and they'll be able to stay afloat for the time being. But as we talked about in the uh, first segment, the Super League is a real option. It's something that is out there that the NCAA is looking for structure. They're looking for something to um, just get rid of all the chaos that's going on all around us right now. And I think the Super League is a real option to do that. And I think If that were to happen, it's kind of a get-on-board-or-get-run-over type of proposition for most of these teams, FSU included. So I think if you're Florida State, it's got to just be all about keeping as much money as possible and getting as much money in the short term as possible to foot the bills that are coming down the road. Um, So it feels like one of those things where, not to say that Florida State is doing the wrong thing by fighting this and by continuing to push out of the conference because you never really know when all of this stuff is going to happen with the Super League or with the new structure or with any of that type of stuff, but I do wonder just how long it'll matter, Um, how long if they were to find their way out of the ACC and into the Big Ten for a reasonable amount, whatever that may be, um, how long are they there? Uh, it does the Super League walk in in 2027 or whatever and totally take over the sport and push them right back into the group that they were just um, not a part of? So there's a lot of things at play here. I, I think it's one of those things that we have all of these cases happening all around the country, and um, they're almost just little pockets. And then you have the big overarching um, kind of boogeyman in this entire thing, which is that NIL um, case because it's something that not only will change the world for the athletes and the coaches, it's going to change everything about the way that conferences are constructed, NIL is constructed, especially if the Super League is the way that they go. All of this stuff is going to change pretty much at the drop of a hat. And if you're Florida State, you could have only, you know, you could have gone through all of this fight, spent all of this money, possibly even given up some of the revenue that you were going to get from a new conference to get into that new conference for the time being. And then in two years, you're right back where you were with Miami, with Clemson, with all of those teams that, um, you know, you're trying to get away from right now. So it's a very interesting thing. And I'll, I'll be totally honest, as we go through all of these cases and all of the different things going on around college football in the courtroom, some of it goes over my head. I, I won't lie to you. I am very much a football guy, not necessarily too much of a law guy. I, I have not uh, dipped my toe too far into those waters as of yet. Now, I like to think that I'm becoming better and better uh, handling these things and um, talking about them, but a lot of this is very murky, and a lot of this is very confusing, and the future of college football especially is very confusing, but um, all of these different battles that are being had around the country feel like they are, you know, the minor bouts to get up to the main card, right? They're the prelims before you get to the the big time uh, fight at the end of the night, which is the NIL case. So all of this stuff, you know, all of the things that could be happening are minor dominoes. And then the big one could drop. And then all of that stuff that has been, you know, scrutinized over for the past, you know, 
six months and possibly going on uh, for multiple other months here uh, in the future, all of that could kind of be done away with very, very quickly. If this new NIL deal is agreed upon, all these schools have to foot out a crazy bill. Some of the schools have to fold possibly their uh, football programs and you're in a position where you need structure, so you go to the Super League, or you go to the new dis- subdivision, and all of the work that was put in by Florida State, by Clemson, by all of these schools that are looking around trying to find a new place to play might be for not, or might at least not be for what they were hoping it would be for. So this is a really interesting thing. I think college football right now, when you look at it, is a very unstable house of cards. Everything is kind of holding up the same way it had been, you know, 25 years ago. And uh, obviously there's been some errs and ahs added to the game, but we haven't necessarily adapted the way that we should have. Uh, so anything could blow that house of cards over, but there's one big old fan in the corner of the room that uh, could wreak absolute havoc on that house of cards and make us rebuild it from scratch. Now, to be totally honest, I don't know if that would be the worst thing in the world because maybe that house of cards would be a little bit more sturdy and we'd have a little bit more of a structure to it, but some things are going to happen, that's for sure, and some dominoes are going to fall, but these dominoes are, you know, small grapes con- uh, c- uh, compared to the big NIL, Super League, new structure, whatever is going to happen with that case. So, While this is going to be very interesting to watch and Florida State and the ACC will continue to battle tooth and nail and not be too uh, great of friends going forward, I do think that um, there is a reality where Florida State goes through all this effort, finds their way out of the ACC, gets into the Big Ten, and then a couple years down the road is told by the uh, Super League that, guess what, you're going back to what used to be the ACC and you're going to hang out with some of the schools that you got away from very quickly. So It'll be really interesting to watch how that develops. Obviously, some of this stuff is pretty well down the road, but um, definitely something to keep your eye out on. Uh, There's so many court cases going on that it's very hard to keep track of, but um, the NIL one is the one that I'm watching very, very closely because I think it's the one that has the biggest impact on what the future of college football will look like. So we'll continue to break down the Florida State case as more stuff happens. We'll continue to break down the NIL case as more stuff happens, but... We're going to take our final break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit of a transfer portal update. Everything went crazy yesterday, and has been for the past couple of days, but especially yesterday. Felt like a lot of news came out, and a couple of guys jumped in that I did not expect at all. So we will break down those guys and everything that has happened in the portal right after this, so stick with us. <laughs> 